In mathematics, certain kinds of mistaken proof are often exhibited, and sometimes collected, as illustrations of a concept of mathematical fallacy. There is a distinction between a simple mistake and a mathematical fallacy in a proof. A mistake in a proof leads to an invalid proof just in the same way, but in the best known examples of mathematical fallacies, there is some concealment in the presentation of the proof. For example, the reason validity fails may be a division by zero that is hidden by algebraic notation. There is a certain quality of the mathematical fallacy, as typically presented, it leads not only to an absurd result, but does so in a crafty or clever way. Therefore, these fallacies, for pedagogic reasons, usually take the form of spurious proofs of obvious contradictions. Although the proofs are flawed, the errors, usually by design, are comparatively subtle, or designed to show that certain steps are conditional, and are not applicable in the cases that are the exceptions to the rules. The traditional way of presenting a mathematical fallacy is to give an invalid step of deduction mixed in with valid steps, so that the meaning of fallacy is here slightly different from the logical fallacy. The latter applies normally to a form of argument that is not a genuine rule of logic, where the problematic mathematical step is typically a correct rule applied with a tacit wrong assumption. Beyond pedagogy, the resolution of a fallacy can lead to deeper insights into a subject such as the introduction of Pasha's axiom of Euclidean geometry and the five-color theorem of graph theory. Pseudaria, an ancient lost book of false proofs, is attributed to Euclid. Mathematical fallacies exist in many branches of mathematics. In elementary algebra, typical examples may involve a step where division by zero is performed, where a root is incorrectly extracted, or, more generally, where different values of a multiple valued function are equated. Well-known fallacies also exist in elementary Euclidean geometry and calculus. <laughs> Howlers Examples exist of mathematically correct results derived by incorrect lines of reasoning. Such an argument, however true the conclusion, is mathematically invalid and is commonly known as a howler. For example, the calculation anomalous cancellation 16 64 equals 16 6 4 equals 1 4 Display style frac sixteen sixty four equals frac sixteen six four equals frac one four. Although the conclusion sixteen sixty four equals one four. Display style text style frac sixteen sixty four equals frac one four is correct, there is a fallacious, invalid cancellation in the middle step. Another classical example of a howler is proving the Cayley–Hamilton theorem by simply substituting the scalar variables of the characteristic polynomial by the matrix. Bogus proofs, calculations, or derivations constructed to produce a correct result in spite of incorrect logic or operations were termed Howlers by Maxwell. Outside the field of mathematics, the term howler has various meanings, generally less specific. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Division by zero. The division by zero fallacy has many variants. The following example uses division by zero to prove that 2 equals 1 display style 2 equals 1 
but can be modified to prove that any number equals any other number. Let a display style and b display style b be equal non-zero quantities a equals b display style a equals b multiplied by a display style a a two equals a b display style a caret two equals ab subtract b two display style b caret two a two minus b two equals a b minus b 2 display style a caret 2 b caret 2 equals ab b caret 2 factor both sides the left factors as a difference of squares the right is factored by extracting b display style b from both terms minus b a plus b equals b a minus b display style ab a plus b equals b ab divide out a minus B display style a b a plus b equals b display style a plus b equals b. Observing that a equals b display style a equals b b plus b equals b display style b plus b equals b combine like terms on the left 2 b equals b display style 2 b equals b divide by the non zero b Display style b two equals one. Display style two equals one. QED the fallacy is in line five. The progression from line four to line five involves division by a minus b, which is zero since a equals b. Since division by zero is undefined, the argument is invalid. topic multivalued functions many functions do not have a unique inverse for instance while squaring a number gives a unique value there are two possible square roots of a positive number the square root is multivalued one value can be chosen by convention as the principal value, in the case of the square root the non-negative value is the principal value, but there is no guarantee that the square root given as the principal value of the square of a number will be equal to the original number, e.g. the principal square root of the square of minus 2 is 2. Calculus. <coughs> <coughs> Calculus as the mathematical study of infinitesimal change and limits can lead to mathematical fallacies if the properties of integrals and differentials are ignored. 
For instance, a naive use of integration by parts can be used to give a false proof that 0 equals 1. Letting u equals 1 log x display style text style u equals frac 1 log x and d v equals d x x display style text style dv equals frac dx x we may write 1 x log x d x equals 1 plus 1 x log x d x display style int frac 1 x log x dx equals 1 plus int frac 1 x log x dx after which the antiderivatives may be cancelled yielding 0 equals 1 the problem is that antiderivatives are only defined up to a constant and shifting them by one or indeed any number is allowed. The error really comes to light when we introduce arbitrary integration limits are and b a b 1 x log x d x equals 1 a b plus a b 1 x log x d x equals 0 plus a B one x log x d x equals a b one x log x d x Display style int underscore a carrot b frac one x log x dx equals one underscore a carrot b plus int underscore a carrot b frac one x log x dx equals zero plus int underscore a carrot b frac one x log x dx equals int underscore a carrot b frac one x log x dx since the difference between two values of a constant function vanishes, the same definite integral appears on both sides of the equation. <laughs> Power and root Fallacies involving disregarding the rules of elementary arithmetic through an incorrect manipulation of the radical. Positive and negative roots Care must be taken when taking the square root of both sides of an equality. Failing to do so results in a proof of 5 equals 4 Display style 5 equals 4 Proof Start from Minus twenty equals minus twenty. Display style minus twenty equals minus twenty. Write this as twenty five minus forty five equals sixteen minus. 36 
Display style twenty five minus forty five equals sixteen minus thirty six. Three writers five two minus five times nine equals four two minus four times nine Display style five carat two minus five times nine equals four carat two minus four times nine add eighty one four Display style eighty one quarters on both sides five two minus five times nine plus eighty one four equals four two minus four times nine plus eighty one four Display style five carat two minus five times nine plus eighty one quarters equals four carat two minus four times nine plus eighty one quarters. These are perfect squares five minus nine two two equals four minus Nine two two Display style five minus nine halves, carrot two equals four minus nine halves, carrot two. Take the square. Re root of both sides five minus nine two equals four minus nine two Display style five minus nine halves equals four minus nine halves add nine two Display style nine halves on both sides five equals four Display style five equals four QED. The fallacy is in the second to last line, where the square root of both sides is taken, A two. Topic B two only implies a B if a and B have the same sign, which is not the case here. In this case it implies a topic b and should read 5 minus 9 halves 4 minus 9 halves which by adding 9 halves on both sides correctly reduces to 5 equals 5 as another example of the danger of taking the square root of both sides of an equation, consider the fundamental identity cos 2 x equals 1 minus sin 2 x Display style cos carrot two x equals one sin carrot two x, which holds as a consequence of the Pythagorean theorem. Then, by taking a square root cos x equals one minus sin two x. Display style cos x equals sqrt one sin carrot two x, so that one 
plus cos x equals 1 plus 1 minus sin 2 x Display style one plus cos x equals one plus SQRT one sin carrot two x. But evaluating this when x equals pi implies one minus one equals one plus one minus zero Display style one minus one equals one plus SQRT one to zero or zero equals two Display style zero equals two which is incorrect. The error in each of these examples fundamentally lies in the fact that any equation of the form X Two equals a two display style x caret two equals a caret two has two solutions, provided a does not equal zero. X equals plus or minus a display style x equals pmr and it is essential to check which of these solutions is relevant to the problem at hand. In the above fallacy, the square root that allowed the second equation to be deduced from the first is valid only when cos x is positive. In particular, when x is set to π, the second equation is rendered invalid. Squaring both sides of an equation When both sides of an equation are squared, sometimes solutions are induced that were not present in the original equation. An example of this kind of fallacy, is the following invalid proof that minus 2 equals 2 Display style minus two equals two. Let x equals minus two. Display style x equals minus two. Squaring gives x two equals four. Display style x caret two equals four, whereupon taking a square root implies x equals four equals two. Display style x equals sqrt four equals two, so that x equals Minus two equals two. Display style x equals minus two equals two, which is absurd. When the square root was extracted, it was the negative root minus two, rather than the positive root that was relevant for the particular solution in the problem. Topic. Square roots of negative numbers Invalid proofs utilizing powers and roots are often of the following kind 1 equals 1 equals minus 1 minus 1 equals minus 1 minus 1 equals i i equals minus 
1 display style 1 equals sqrt 1 equals sqrt minus 1 minus 1 equals sqrt minus 1 sqrt minus 1 equals i c d o t i equals minus 1 the fallacy is that the rule x y equals x y Display style text style sqrt x y equals sqrt x sqrt y is generally valid only if both x and y are positive when dealing with real numbers, which is not the case here. Alternatively, imaginary roots are obfuscated in the following: i equals minus one equals minus 1 2 4 equals minus 1 2 1 4 equals 1 1 4 equals one display style i equals sqrt minus one equals minus one carrot frac two four equals minus one carrot two carrot frac one four equals one carrot frac one four equals one. The error here lies in the last equality, where we are ignoring the other fourth roots of one, which are minus one i and minus i, where i is the imaginary unit. Since we have squared our figure and then taken roots, we cannot always assume that all the roots will be correct. So the correct fourth roots are i and minus i, which are the imaginary numbers defined to square to minus 1. Topic complex exponents When a number is raised to a complex power, the result is not uniquely defined see failure of power and logarithm identities. If this property is not recognized, then errors such as the following can result: e2 pi i equals 1, e2 pi i i equals 1, i e minus 2 pi equals 1. Display style begin aligned e caret 2 pi i and equals 1, e caret 2 pi i caret i and equals 1 caret i e caret minus 2 pi and equals 1. End aligned. The error here is that the rule of multiplying x exponents as when going to the third line does not apply unmodified with complex exponents, even if when putting both sides to the power i only the principal value is chosen. When treated as multivalued functions, both sides produce the same set of values, being e2 pi n, n element of geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Many mathematical fallacies in geometry arise from using in an additive equality involving oriented quantities such adding vectors along a given line or adding oriented angles in the plane a valid identity, but which fixes only the absolute value of one of these quantities. This quantity is then incorporated into the equation with the wrong orientation, so as to produce an absurd conclusion. This wrong orientation is usually suggested implicitly by supplying an imprecise diagram of the situation, where relative positions of points or lines are chosen in a way that is actually impossible under the hypotheses of the argument, but non-obviously so. Such a fallacy is easy to expose by drawing a precise picture of the situation, in which some relative positions will be different from those in the provided diagram. In order to avoid such fallacies, a correct geometric argument using addition or subtraction of distances or angles should always prove that quantities are being incorporated with their correct orientation. <laughs> Fallacy of the isosceles triangle 
The fallacy of the isosceles triangle, from Maxwell 1959, Chapter 2, Section 1, purports to show that every triangle is isosceles, meaning that two sides of the triangle are congruent. This fallacy has been attributed to Lewis Carroll, given a triangle ABC, prove that AB equals AC, draw a line bisecting A, Draw the perpendicular bisector of segment BC, which bisects BC at a point D. Let these two lines meet at a point O. Draw line OR perpendicular to AB, line OQ perpendicular to AC. Draw lines OB and OC by AAS, RAU QAO or a Topic OQA ninety degrees Rao Topic QAO Al Al common side by RHS Rob QOC Bro Topic CQO Ninety degrees bow. Topic OC hypotenuse rho. OQ leg. Thus R. Topic AQ RB. QC and AB. Topic R plus RB AQ plus QC equals ACQ, ED. As a corollary, one can show that all triangles are equilateral by showing that AB. Topic BC and AC BC in the same way. The error in the proof is the assumption in the diagram that the point O is inside the triangle. In fact, O always lies at the circumcircle of the ABC except for isosceles and equilateral triangles where O and OD coincide. Furthermore, it can be shown that, if AB is longer than AC, then R will lie within AB, while Q will lie outside of AC and vice versa. Any diagram drawn with sufficiently accurate instruments will verify the above two facts, because of this, AB is still R plus RB, but AC is actually AQ minus QC, and thus the lengths are not necessarily the same. Topic. Proof by induction There exist several fallacious proofs by induction in which one of the components, basis case or inductive step, is incorrect. Intuitively, proofs by induction work by arguing that, if a statement is true in one case, it is true in the next case, and hence by repeatedly applying this it can be shown to be true for all cases. This proof shows that all horses are the same color. Let us say that any group of n horses is all of the same color. If we remove a horse from the group, we have a group of n1 horses of the same color. If we add another horse, we have another group of n horses. By our previous assumption, all the horses are of the same color in this new group, since it is a group of n horses. Thus we have constructed two groups of n horses all of the same color, with n1 horses in common. Since these two groups have some horses in common, the two groups must be of the same color as each other. Therefore, combining all the horses used, we have a group of n plus 1 horses of the same color. Thus if any n horses are all the same color, any n plus 1 horses are the same color. 
This is clearly true for n equals 1 i.e. one horse is a group where all the horses are the same color. Thus, by induction, n horses are the same color for any positive integer n i.e. all horses are the same color. The fallacy in this proof arises in line 3. For n equals 1, the two groups of horses have n minus 1. Topic: Zero horses in common, and thus are not necessarily the same color as each other. So the group of n plus one, two horses, is not necessarily all of the same color. The implication: Every n horses are of the same color. Then n plus one horses are of the same color works for any n greater than 1 but fails to be true when n topic 1 the basis case is correct but the induction step has a fundamental flaw if we were additionally given the fact that any two horses shared the same color we could correctly induct from the base case of n 2 See also List of incomplete proofs Mathematical coincidence Paradox Proof by intimidation Notes <laughs> <laughs>